Let's assume that we have a population with a normal distribution. The mean of the population is unknown to us, but sigma is known. Now, if we start to take all possible samples of size n from that population, central limit theorem tells us that the distribution of x bars would be a normal distribution where the expected value of x bars or the mean of the distribution of x bars is the mean of the population and standard deviation of the distribution of x bar would be standard deviation of the population divided by square root of n. And since we know a lot about the normal distribution, we can make a lot of predictions about what would be the behavior of x bars. For example, we know that if we take all possible samples of size n, 95.4% of sample means will be between mu minus 2 sigma divided by square root of n and mu plus 2 sigma divided by square root of n. Which means that if we go two standard deviations of x bar distribution to the left of the mean and two standard deviations of the x bar distribution to the right of the mean, 95.4% of sample means would be in that range. That is basically using our understanding of normal distribution and applying it to the distribution of sample means, which we know has a normal distribution. Now let's see what happens when we start taking these samples. The first sample would have a mean close to the mean of the population. Another sample may be a little bit to the other side of the mean of the distribution. We know that the distribution of sample means would have a concentration around the mean of the population because we know that the mean of the distribution of x bar is the mean of the population and we know that its dispersion around the mean is less than the dispersion of the population because the dispersion of the sample means is sigma divided by square root of n so it's definitely less than the dispersion of the population individuals and we know that 95.4 percent of them will land in this range but let's take another sample let's say this sample is one of those 95.4 percent and if we look at the this sample specifically if we go two standard deviations sigma of x bar to the left and two standard deviations sigma of x bar to the right of that x bar we know that for these observations that are within uh, two standard deviations of the mu if we go two standard deviations to the left and two the standard deviation uh, to the right of them this range will always cover the mean of the population. Just think about this one. If we go two standard deviations to the left, two standard deviations to the right, it will cover mu. So one conclusion is that for the 95.4% of x bars that land in the interval mu minus 2 sigma of x bar and mu plus 2 sigma of x bar, the range x bar minus 2 sigma divided by square root of n and x bar plus 2 sigma divided by square root of n always covers mu. Therefore, for all x bars, the range x bar minus 2 standard deviation of x bar to x bar plus 2 standard deviation of x bar will cover the mean of the population 95.4% of the time. Now let's uh, consider this situation. We have a population, we don't know the mean of the population, and we know the standard deviation of the population, which has a normal distribution. We take a sample of size n from that population, and the mean of our sample turns out to be x1 bar. The mean of this sample 
is the best estimate that we may come up for the mean of the population. But if someone asks us, are you sure that the mean of the population is x1 bar? We have to say, no, we are not sure. So what do we know about the distribution of sample means? If we consider this x1 bar that we just got from the previous slide, we know that for all x bars, the range x bar minus 2 standard deviation of x bar and x bar plus 2 standard deviation of x bar covers mean of the population 95.4% of the time. Therefore, to summarize, we know that if we take a sample, there is 95.4% chance that this sample mean is one of those that if we go to sigma divided by square root of n less than x bar and 2 sigma divided by square root of n more than x bar, this interval will cover the mu, the mean of the population. Therefore, when we take a sample and the mean of the sample, uh, let's say, is x bar, we are 95.4% confident that the interval x bar minus 2 sigma divided by square root of n and x bar plus 2 sigma divided by square root of n covers the mean of the population that is unknown to us. What summarizes this finding is that the 95.4% confidence interval for population mean is from x bar minus 2 sigma divided by square root of n to x bar plus 2 sigma divided by square root of n. It is obvious that if we wanted to have a different level of confidence, let's say 90% or 68% or whatever, then based on the normal distribution, we can go a different uh, distance from the sample mean and uh, find out what would be the range that we are confident to a certain level it is now obvious that if we want to find out the 68.26% confidence interval, we can say that the 68.26% confidence interval for the population mean is from x bar minus sigma divided by square root of n to x bar plus sigma divided by square root of n.